So with curtain walls, um, they're actually a really interesting tool to draw facade elements as well. So I'm just going to draw a curtain wall in here. Uh, let's see what this looks like in 3D. So you have a kind of a basic curtain wall here. Let's make this go up like uh, 40 feet. Um, so cur again, curtain walls are a really cool tool to actually draw facade elements. So maybe you have an offset of about four feet. Um, you could make this curtain wall kind of a shading element like you showed in that one image. Um, and I'll show you uh, kind of some steps on how to do that. So first thing we want to do is modify this curtain wall so it's kind of has a repeating set of mullions. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call this vertical shading. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to remove the borders uh, for all of these mullions. And I actually don't want any horizontal ones either. I just want vertical. So we're going to change our horizontal grid to be none. We're going to change our vertical grid to be one foot. Um, and up here, the other trick is we're going to change our system panel. You can't actually click none because none, it's going to revert back to a default. What you actually want to do is change your system panel to be empty. So there's something called empty system panel here. And what this is going to look like now is this. Holy grid lines. Is now we have this kind of vertical shading device kind of in front of our building here. So that's kind of what you're talking about. Um, with this as well, we could edit profile and we could create some funky voids, you know, going up this uh, to actually expose this facade here. Like so. So now the curtain wall elements aren't really uh, shading everything. They're only just shading the section that we didn't cut out. Um, we can also have a little bit of control over, um, you know, I'm going to do one thing here. I'm just going to delete all of our horizontal mullions. And click this, click mullions. And should only delete. Okay, there we go just deleted the top and bottom ones by doing that. So we kind of have this interesting skin on the outside. Um, taking this a step further, if we go to our project browser, we go down to families and we go to mullions, curtain wall mullions, we go to rectangular here. So right now we're using this 2.5 by five. We could go in here, we go to new type and we could call this, um, like you could do some like really thin pieces of steel, right? So we could call this, maybe half inch by, you know, six inch. Um, so some like really thin kind of almost like, um, uh, uh, what am I saying here? Um, they're almost just like thin flat bars and it's almost like a fin. Um, and then we change this to be six inch. So the curtain wall mullions are just based on the center. So you just kind of have to use so if you have half inch, you just have to put the width on both sides, or you can make one side zero. So um, now we can go back into here and we can change this to be our new mullion type, which is our half inch by six. And then maybe with this, we actually change this to be six inch, uh, six inch spacing. So the spacing is really dense. that change yeah that change so now you kind of have this kind of cool fin system so i don't know if that's exactly the question you're asking but like i use that as a way to repeat elements mm -hmm. yeah so you're essentially like okay so you could take this a step further. Um, let me just copy both these to the side here. Um, so 
Are you thinking that the curtain wall would be held by that star shape? Um, and would you think that would be on the inside or the outside? That would be on the outside. On the outside? Okay. Is it holding the curtain walls or just like outside of it? It's just like outside. Okay. So with this, if it's timber, we need to add some thickness, right? So I'm going to grab this one we just created. I'm going to go to type properties here. Let's go to duplicate. Uh, for timber, you're probably like 4 by 12 is probably what they would put on the exterior because you want to have some meat to that. So let's do uh, 4 by 12 inches. And uh, we'll just do 0, 2, 0, 2. Um, and then the thickness would be 12 inches. And so we can also set the material here. So you can set the material to be wood for these as well. I'm not, I'm not going to bother doing that, but you could. So um, on this one here, there's a couple things we can do. So we can duplicate this and we can call this vertical, I'll just call it vertical shading too. Um, we could have horizontal and um, vertical mullions and this is how I kind of create that star. It won't be a star shape in particular, but it'll be a cross shape. Um, star shape, what I would maybe consider doing is doing uh, two different court walls that overlap. So you could have two like this and like two like this and then when those two shapes overlap they'll create you know more complex but just yeah wait one second here let's just see what this looks like so i'm going to create a maximum spacing of let's maybe do three feet and a maximum spacing of three feet and then um the last part is we can ang change this angle to be a 45 and change this angle to be a 45. So now we kind of have this cross shape on the outside. Is that closer to what you're thinking or? Uh, so uh, just looking at this facade here this is kind of really what we're looking at creating so what we're going to do is we're going to go to file new and we're going to sorry file new family uh, family we're going to create a curtain panel uh, family so we're going to go up to english imperial we're going to go to it doesn't really matter you could use uh, metric if you want but i'm going to use imperial we're going to go to curtain wall panel and what we did was we created a series of reference planes so we're going to add a reference plane uh, about two inches away from here our mullions are about a foot deep so we're going to do this at 12 inches away and then we're going to create another one two inches so we're going to use that as kind of our our thickness um, so what we'd want to do to, um, I guess, get the different panelized system here is we want to create a few different versions of this. So, you know, we could slope it uh, from a different corner or whatever. Um, so let's go back here. Um, and we, we just did one. We created one a second ago here. So I call it triangle it's sloped. Um, so this is this is kind of a look at what we're going to create. Uh, so we're going to create this panel that's kind of on an angle like this. So we're going to make this one just a little bit different. So we're going to make this one kind of at the bottom. Um, so we're going to go to create extrusion. Uh, essentially, we're going to create uh, one extrusion and two voids. So we're going to click pick line. We're going to pick uh, these lines here. And we're going to lock them. Lock that. And then we're going to draw an angle piece in here. Like so. And then we're going to extrude this uh, from the right. Uh, so we're going to extrude this, just hitting uh, zoom all. We're going to extrude this so it touches those outer reference planes. So let's lock these. I'm going to pull these back and lock that. 
move that and then bring it back and lock. It's not letting me lock that. Uh, should be okay. Um, and so now we want to create two voids. So we're going to go to create void extrusion. And what we're going to do is pick line. I'm going to turn on pick line and lock just to make my life a little bit easier. And uh, what we're going to do is I think we do we do it from the up part of the bottom part. I think we did it from the upper part. So let's do, uh, we're going to go from here to here. So that, that panel has like a two inch thickness. I think the last time we did it to a point, but I think this will be better. And like that. And then we're going to create one going the other direction. Um, so we'll go to create void extrusion. We're going to kick, pick line like that and then we're going to draw it between here oh yeah we did do that okay did something similar last time so let's draw these and then uh yeah check box and then so let's go to our 3d or let's go to our right our exterior view for a second so we have these void forms um so we just want to extrude this across so it locks on that line extrude it on this direction, lock it on that line. And then we have this other one here, we're gonna extrude it across, lock again, and extrude that across and lock it. And so now in 3D, this looks like this. So we have a slope panel going the other direction. I'd probably figure out how to make that more uniform, but I think for this, it works okay. Let's load that back into our project, load it into our project two. And let's just save this as the same family, but I'm gonna call this, uh, uh, let's just call this bottom, I'm going to call this BL, bottom left. So um, you could name it obviously however you want. You could just name it one, two, three, four if you wanted to as well. Um, but now when we're back into our project, we can uh, work on actually putting those curtain walls in. So uh, there's a cute couple different ways to do this. So we created this box or this, this uh, grid here with the mullions. Um, we could actually click on this and we could add our panels directly to this. So that would be an easy way of doing it. Uh, we can go to curtain panel uh, and change this panel to be our angled ones. And we can click okay. The disadvantage of doing it this way, which you'll see in a second, is we're kind of, uh, we kind of don't have any control over how those panels, and if we go on the side view here, the panels are sticking out the one side. Um, looks like we have an extrusion issue too, so we can fix that. Um, so what I would prefer to do is not do it that way. And, uh, oh yeah, uh, oh I didn't cut, no, yeah, you're right, I didn't cut it. Uh, so that's why. Uh, so what we're gonna do here, uh, we'll fix that in a second. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna copy this curtain wall out. And we're going to create this curtain wall as no mullions, just the panels. Um, so we're going to go here. We're going to duplicate this. We're going to call this triangle panels only. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the mullions to none, to none. We're going to keep our three by three spacing and we're going to change our system grid to be our new BL panel and what's going to happen is it's going to delete all those grid members and now essentially we have two curtain panels to delete them all no it didn't uh, we'll just go from our top view here and what I'm going to do is just select over top of this and we're just going to filter by mullion and we're going to delete uh, Replace panels. Um, sorry, I'm in the wrong view here. Um, and then I think if you create a few different types, you know, I would find one that largely works for you, but then what you want to do is then uh, manually change a bunch of the ordering of them. So let's fix our curtain panel here. Um, let's go to our new one here. And it looks like we have a couple issues going on. So let's see what those issues are. I think I might have not locked a couple of the extrusion parts. So um, this is cutting. Uh, so it looks like it is cutting in that view. 
So let's look and see what's going on in floor plan. So uh, this is, let's lock that there. Let's lock that there. Lock that there. That one is locked there. This one is locked there. And let's find our actual overall mass. Let's just make sure this is locked. That one's locked there. That one's locked. Yeah, so I think the problem is we didn't have a few of these locked. So let's load this back in and see if it works a little bit better now. I think I might have to fix the height because it looks like the height is too long as well. So it looks like that's modeling a little bit better. Uh, let's go to edit. I think what I'll do is what I'm just going to do is change this and see what breaks. So we have some issues with some stuff breaking. Click this and see if I can get this to lock onto that. Yeah, okay. See if that works better. Let's just see what that looks like in 3D. So it seems like it's still working. So maybe that should fix it. It's sometimes a good trick when you're working with objects with reference points is to try to break it by just dragging those reference points or trying to change the size by breaking it like that. And if this doesn't work, I'll just flip back to the other one that we did first. Okay, it's working out. Um, and so now the last kind of step is, I'm just gonna go from the above view here. Um, I'm just gonna drag this new grid back in um, so that this is inside of our family like so and now this is what it looks like so you kind of have these panels and we could go in here and grab one of these unpin it and we could change it to be our other triangle slope that we made before from the upper part so you'd have to manually go through and change a bunch of those but it's doable uh, and uh, the current panels are a nice way of kind of creating some repetition so the other way of maybe doing it really easily, uh, maybe not. So say the one way of doing it really easily would be to create rows, but then it kind of looks too uniform. Um, another way to do it would be to hide the curtain, the mullions, and hide uh, the mullions behind it, just so you're seeing just the panels only, and then just randomly go through. So essentially what I do is hide uh, this, no. Well, we hide this one, hide this one, and then what I would do is just go through and just grab and you know maybe you could grab a couple over here, a couple over there, and we can unpin or let's do a filter check uh, panels. Uh, then we could do unpin and change this to be the other. So you could, so the ones that it's replacing here, uh, I mean, I guess it's probably fine, but yeah, you'd wanna go through and manually kind of edit and change the direction of some of these. So it's a little bit time consuming, but it's doable. But it's yeah.